Something big just happened in Australia's battery industry and you deserve the facts. Today I'm going to break down exactly what occurred when it comes to the SIG energy issue, why a small number of systems experienced faults and why I'm actually impressed with how the manufacturer responded. What I'm not impressed by is how parts of the industry immediately try to turn this into a marketing weapon for their battery against SIG. So let's cut the noise, keep it serious and talk about what really happened. Presented by Your Energy Answers. So what actually happened? A small number of single phase SIG energy systems have experienced heat sparking or melting around the AC plug area. SIG Energy has now formally confirmed, after engineers attended some of the affected sites, that the failed plugs were not installed as per the official installation instructions. And they have supplied documented evidence of these findings to electrical regulators. Now, nevertheless, we have also spoken to installers who swear black and blue. They did the right thing and nevertheless, the result looked like this. The good news is SIG Energy has acted decisively and the issues are being fixed. There's also a broader technical factor and that's the VPP participation. So when batteries simultaneously discharge at the evening peak altogether around six o'clock, let's say, we've seen it in our own uh, office here, 14 kilowatt hours trying to get out of the battery as quick as possible. It heated the inverter up to the point that it throttled itself down. So you now got an AC cable that is getting a lot of electricity through and it gets heated, a plug design that could have been improved, as well as potentially practices that weren't following in every aspect on the installation manual. And you get those three things together, it's like air crash investigators. You look at it and go, well, if that and that would have happened, this still could have survived, but altogether, jingo jongo. So what happened is there was an inverter, it was heated up, um, there were sparks coming out of it, there was smoke coming out of it, but it did not move into the battery. So in some way, it's a field test to actually show that the fire suppression techniques, materials in the SIG energy battery actually work. So in some way, while it's a negative that it happened in the first place, it's actually a positive that everything else that was supposed to happen, happened. I drove my car, I had a crash, thank God I had the seat belt, thank God I had the airbag. So it's a bit like that. And in this case, SIG Energy's response from where I stand has been thorough and constructive. Here's what SIG Energy has done so far. They redesigned the AC connector to a simpler, more robust OT style plug, the same as in the three phase. They pushed out firmware protections. This firmware now automatically limits AC output if the system detects sustained full power operation that could overheat the plugs. Every online single phase 8, 10, 12 kilowatt inverter has already received this firmware update. So if you got one of those machines and models, they're safe. Systems that are offline and cannot receive the firmware they're being prioritized for the replacement program and SIG Energy is tracking these daily. Now an important point to make, SIG Energy is voluntarily replacing these units at no cost to the customer. So they cover the replacement cost for the inverter, the plugs, etc. plus they offer a $500 cash payment for the installers to swap it over. They've flown in the replacement inverters. They've spent real money on this and they've done so before any government action forced them to do any of this. And they're offering an extra two year warranty on every replacement inverter. I think that's a win. So I would say, so far I'm quite impressed. There's nothing swept under the carpet and I'm not a SIG Energy spokesperson. I don't work for them. I simply own one of their systems myself. I've been in the solar industry since 2006 and I want this industry to grow and to improve without unnecessary fear or misinformation. 
which brings us to the way this has been communicated. So Solar Quote's recent coverage, in my opinion, unfortunately relied on traumatic language and a single incident was used without equal weight given to the technical context or the swift engineering response from SIG. Some commentary even came from individuals who affiliation with Solar Quote wasn't immediately transparent. So on the Solar Cutter, the guy wrote the Solar Quote article, put it out there and made it look like a big thing, but he didn't say, I wrote the article, I'm the Solar Quote guy. Now guys, if you wanna be on the side of honesty and openness, don't assume everybody knows who you are. Show what your true intent is, and if your intent is to protect the end customer, then a little bit less emotions, a little bit more facts will actually do the right thing. So we were communicating with Seek Energy and got a statement and it says, Seek Energy was communicating with regulators, industry bodies and partners behind the scene the entire time. They simply were not legally allowed to comment publicly until certain steps were cleared. Solar Quotes knew this, but they didn't wait. They run the story anyway. And then a few days later, a milder second version of the story followed. They could have waited to get the full info, but they preferred, in my opinion, clicks over facts. That doesn't help the industry. All it does is feed into fear and gives ammunition to media outlets waiting to create Pink Bats 2.0. Yes, there was a problem. There was a small fire in the inverter. It didn't spread. SIG is responding. Very good response with a redesign. Could have maybe done before, but they learned. The industry is now obviously in a big bind because we're all trying to get these installs done to the end of the year and now there's another thing we've got to look after and it causes a fear factor in the industry that wasn't needed. My seek works fine, it's in a safe spot, I'm not fearing anything. So please, let's not fan the kind of fear factor because we want to have our battery brand to grow a little bit and we smack a little bit another battery to kind of go there. We will all have issues with batteries down the track, various brands, they'll have to improve and everybody's learned now that the AC connector really should be something that we have to look at and the whole AC connection. So sick energy systems remain safe and only a small number of single phase installations were affected. It has not, it's not with the three phase, it's not with the larger unit. So the issue was incorrect terminations combined with a connector that has now been redesigned. And now to the last point, some installers feel a little bit personally aggrieved that they feel that SIG might have thrown them under the bus and said, it's you guys, the way we crimped it, um, and it's not us. You think about it, if this becomes a product issue, then the whole CEC approval process might have to be reviewed, which means potentially every single battery that's sold in Australia right now has to stop being sold because the CEC didn't check it properly, okay? So it is much better if it is at the moment an issue that is to not following the installation conditions rather than be a technical issue that makes it a faulty battery. So don't have your knickers in a knot because there's a reason found that is a contributory reason. But I would also argue that, yes, the plug design could have been better. And I believe that some engineers at SEEK right now would go, yeah, the three-phase plug is possibly the one we should put everywhere in there now. That's what's called learning. Don't kick people while they're down. Give them a hand and help them up. That's the way, and that's the Aussie way that I know. That's the end of my little commentary. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.